as much as it's become a guilty pleasure of mine to shit talk on today's mainstream wrestling, I've also come to understand that obviously it's not, it's not all bad. You leave everything you have in this ring every time. <laughs> okay, maybe I spoke too soon. In the last two years, as Roman Reigns began his true dominance on wrestling, there have been a number of wrestlers that have been on fire, therefore setting ablaze my interest, such as MJF, Sami Zayn, and as it looks obvious, Malachi Black. In a year ago today, it seemed as if Malachi Black had the most potential. With his move in AEW, it seemed as if he could be, if not it, one of the most breakout stars going into 2022. With a new group in House of Black, Black could do no wrong. The pathway seemed clear. So what stopped him from getting to the next level? Cosmic Brethren, that is why we are all here. Like a, bi like a bystander in myself, I'm also here to learn and re-educate myself and what stopped Malachi Black into being what he is, into what potentially could have launched him into being another breakout star. Now honestly, I wasn't watching when he at first came up. Of course, I'm going to have to make that clear. And what I'm about to say, like, uh, I was well off beyond wrestling at that point. So, yeah, obviously I didn't get to watch. I wasn't even tuning it in at that point before, obviously, coming back into 2020. So, uh, yeah, I, was, I was damn sure wasn't watching Triple H's NXT and whatever. Of course, the horror that was black and gold. So, yeah, I, was, I didn't watch that. I didn't know who he was before. So, when I was just tuning back in... You know, Roman was just starting off his reign. You know, COVID. We were still deep into COVID. I had seen a segment where, you know, he had these candles around this chair. In a very dim lighted room. The lights kept flickering. And, you know, it just I painted a picture. You know, it looked like it was like, yeah, as, see, as you see in it play out on screen. And, you know, out pops this, uh humanoid you know shadow, shadowy figure in the background on the chair now at first I was thinking that it could be Bray Wyatt you know cuz that was his character you know a few years ago you know maybe he was making a return back to his character before but to my surprise it was Aleister Black and you know this was going to be his character moving forward you know, he would have these segments around his backstory, you know, leading up to his uh, debut on SmackDown. I thought the stuff he did with Seth Rollins and, you know, involving him and Rollins and Murphy, you know, it was okay. You know, he still had room to improve. You know, he was doing good so far. You know, the, the attack of the eye and that leading to his character becoming a part of it, you know, I, I enjoyed that. Then he was really set to kick off when, you know, the whole that draft at the time and then he had came to SmackDown and, you know, he was set to feud with Big E. He was going to kick off. Unfortunately, he became uh, one of part of uh, some big budget releases, a part of WWE. And unfortunately, you know, he was one of the names on those lists. After Black's release from WWE, it pretty much summed up where he might end up next, being that in Tony Khan acquiring, t acquiring talents such as Bryan and CM Punk, and therefore, of course, Miro and Amber Moon. It then would be brought to reality as Malachi Black has further made his debut. His potentiality would be done justice. As his feud with Cody Rhodes began, 
I thought that was okay. I thought it was a good start to uh, start off his uh, debut coming into AEW. I liked I liked pieces and scenes of it and thought it, yeah, I thought they did that really well. Honestly, that proved for me that, you know, the type of, uh, it was a great, it was a great way to start for him and uh, that it was a uh, very uh, dangerous to his character also as well. The aura and uh, proved that he was a uh, really a, a force to be reckoned with. You know, I wish I could have, uh, you know, gone back and uh, yeah, I just wish that it was the feud itself and the story around it could have been way fleshed out really better, and they could have really uh, coming out of it, coming out of it from Malachi Black. It could have been a, a way to really establish him as uh, a really uh, scary, a dangerous, intriguing figure. To be a really a, a top of it, but considering uh, AEW's and Tony Khan's booking, of course, yeah, so we were we weren't really going to go anywhere at all. And sadly, that was pretty much it. That was uh, what what he did with Cody Rhodes is pretty much the only uh, notable thing that he was really doing in AEW, and then he faded into obscurity, like many others when uh, Tony Khan had just. Uh, you know, signed them to just to get a rating. He kept building House of Black and focusing on that as they were uh, building that team. Uh, sent to Dark and Elevation and pretty much basically the job. And you know, people were getting pissed at that, you know, myself included. He went from one concentrate camp to another and he was doing nothing. You know, AEW you know, just kept up on, you know, the lower shows and yeah, they weren't really using them. They weren't using them at all. Release rumors started to come out. You know, Mal it had it had come out that Malachi had wanted his release, requested his release, and it said that AEW wasn't granting it. They had denied it, and you know, as usual, you know, everybody started to go crazy. Then he took to his Tumblr page to basically it was like a, a some kind of message about talking about like uh, the remainder two years of his career and he had said uh, that two years of this and sometimes it feels like all of it will be to no end nor have any real meaning when it's all over and done it's strange to think certain things in your life will be a memory with no attachments anymore while they were once the most important thing in your life, it truly feels like the entire journey happened for the sake of happening. So I guess he was, uh, it looked, you know, it just sounds like he was basically reflect, reflecting on, uh, you know, also his time in WWE for that, you know, from, I guess, 2020 to and now. And, you know, nothing had really, you know, from his switch to AEW from that, and, you know, nothing really had become of it. And, you know, basically he was like, you know, nothing, he was really gaining nothing from setbacks and everything like that. You know, you know, nothing was really starting to kick off. And, you know, and I guess that was, uh, it seems like that was making him upset. And it just uh, pretty much is, uh, yeah, and it's a, it is a sad thing also too. Because, yeah, I wanted to rise for him also as well and to really, uh, his career to kick in the gear and it seems like you know every time it started to do that you know of course by uh out of his power out of his uh control you know he had he kept getting uh you know you know just like uh cut back and you know just uh not being able to do what he wanted to do then he had took to instagram to fully, uh, you know, answer the rumors and everything about that concerning his mental health also as well. And he had basically said, you know, to all, firstly, thank you for all the messages. No, they are being read and appreciated with all the turmoil going on in the landscape of professional wrestling. I took the time to think of my words, but also needed to wait until conversations between mine and AEW's camp had come to a conclusion. Firstly, I dislike reading parts of my private conversation between myself and AEW in regards to my mental 
well-being on the internet. Of course, I like that. I agree with that also as well. These conversations were private and not meant to be shared with the public. As by now, most people realize I'm, I am a very private person and do not feel the need to have stuff like this out on the internet. And if you've been following me longer than a cup of coffee, you're aware I've spoken about them prior but would like to be the one deciding when this finds its way to the public and not through someone else's mouth as with anything through the lips of someone else that story gets distorted and uh, of course that's just uh, that's the latest of what's going on right now I think that was uh, yeah that's pretty still weeks ago and yeah uh, having his uh, mental health going to do with it because I've heard that also and at this point I can only wish the best for him and uh, just you know cross the fingers and uh, hopefully that he's okay and uh, he gets out and hopefully I want him also to just go to WWE and see if we can pick that way back up uh, this man has too much potential and just you know too much you know the sight and the potential to be you know to cross over and to be really a big thing you know, if you know, really get into the tease with it. So, and I just, I really wish somewhere it can go somewhere with him. So, yeah, hopefully, uh, like I said, hopefully he can go back to WWE and you know, go back to being his best. So, yeah, thank y'all for sticking with me and uh, going with the all throughout as we uh, talked about Malachi Black here today. He's one of my favorites right now, and I just uh, pray the best for him. Because he could be one of the best things that's going on right now. And, yeah. I'll see y'all later. Uh, yeah, possibly tomorrow. And you know, stay blessed. Enjoy the rest of y'all day.